already. Please silence your phones. Thank you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, so I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall need no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder young lion and a dragon shalt thou trample under feet because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart shall find rest unto your souls. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, not that he should return from his ways and live? As I did, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his ways and live. Turn ye 
turn thee from your evil will and ways. For why would you die, O house of Israel? Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye to buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. In the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God he will abundantly pardon him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out ask and it shall be given seek and ye shall find not and it shall be open unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open.
glory to God. Oh, I want to see him. Just to look upon his face. There to sing forever. All the streets of glory. There is where I'll lift my voice. And the last line says, cares are past. I'm home at last. Ever to rejoice. Come on, Sister Angie, sing again for us. Come on, let's give God praise and welcome hallelujah in this house at this time. What? Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, let's celebrate. Hallelujah. I get joy when I think about.
hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name as we celebrate her home going. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Ruth, Mother Ruth, praise God. I think about two or three weeks ago, she came to church and she had this real sharp hat. She's always sharp, y'all. She, she was always just such a lady, dressed so well. And she uh, had this, this hat that they were talking about, how good she looked in it. And I thought about it when we heard about her home going, that she had traded that hat for a crown because the Bible says, hallelujah, glory to God. There was a day of exchange for her, hallelujah, hallelujah. There was a day, hallelujah, when she changed all of the mortal things into the immortal things, praise God. And we find ourselves worshiping and celebrating her. That doesn't mean that you don't cry. That doesn't mean that there is not a sense of loss. That's not what it means. But what it means is that even while the tears are coming down, there's a joy in my soul bubbling up because I know, hallelujah, where she is. The scripture says, I know my Redeemer lives, praise God. And so we praise God. So we, it feels a little churchy. It's going to because she was churchy. Hallelujah. If it feels a little like that, that's because she was like that, right? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, praise the Lord. Our praise God evangelist, hallelujah. Evangelist Anna Moore will be coming to offer the prayer of comfort. Following her will be evangelist Donna Woodland with the Old Testament scripture, Psalms 121, 1 to 8. And the next scripture reading is New Testament, St. John 14, 1 and 6. Praise God. At this time, praise the Lord, the prayer of comfort. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Because it is in you, Jesus, hallelujah, that we find everything that we need. Everything that we need is in you this morning, hallelujah. And so, Lord, we still say thank you, Lord, hallelujah, because it is in you that we find peace. It is in you that we find joy. It is in you that we find comfort. Hallelujah, Jesus, and we thank you. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And we thank you, Lord, for our precious mother, Lord, who has gone on to be with you in glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for our precious mother. Hallelujah. We thank you because we, we saw greatness walk amongst us. Hallelujah. She was a great warrior. Hallelujah. And we thank you for the life. Hallelujah. That mother and was lived before us, Lord. We watched her. We saw her, Lord, walk in and out of her. Hallelujah. We watched her walk in and out, Lord. She walked in and out amongst us. We saw her life. We saw her, her, her effort, Lord. We saw her dedication, Lord. We saw all the things that she did in her quiet and meek and humble spirit. But yet we knew there was strength underneath there, strength that only you could give, Lord. And we thank you for her life today, Lord. And we know, Lord Jesus, that she is going on to glory. Hallelujah. She woke up in glory. Hallelujah. She woke up in your presence, Lord. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father, we ask that you comfort the family, Lord. Hallelujah. Comfort missionary Barbara and Elder Edwards, Lord, and the grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren, and all those who are, Lord, connected to Mother, Lord, all those that bond that is there. Lord, help them to reflect, hallelujah, on the good times, on the good memories, on all of her wisdom, all of her knowledge, Lord. Let it go down to the generations. Let it go through all the generations, Lord, that they remember what she told them. Let them, let them remember how she advised them. And Lord, we know, Lord Jesus, that you will keep them in the midnight hour when the tears fall. Hallelujah. You will be there because you are a comforter. Hallelujah. You are a comfort, Lord. You said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Lord. And we thank you for the great comfort that only you can give. In the matchless, mighty, powerful name in the name that's above every other name in the name of Jesus we thank you and we praise you hallelujah thank you.
Praise the Lord, saints. We just thank God for Mother Edwards, such a, a lovely woman. She just was a lovely woman. That's all I can say about her. Our scripture reading for this morning out of the Old Testament is Psalms 121, and it reads thus. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading the New Testament, John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Your word is already blessed, Lord. Thank you. Um, Minister Angela comes, praise the Lord, with praise and worship, praise the Lord. I thought of, uh, as evangelist um, Anna was uh, praying, she said something that stuck in my mind, so I want to share this with you, to share that with those, praise God, that you come in contact with and you talk with. But Mother, Mother Edwards went to sleep here and woke up in glory. My mind was boggled sometimes when we try to kind of figure out the process, the process, because we don't all know the process. But just to imagine to go to sleep here and wake up with Jesus, just to imagine, hallelujah, glory to God, to wake up, hallelujah, glory to God with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God, hallelujah, Sister Angela, praise God.
Evangelist Lily Bell Mabry. Um, afterwards will be praise God reflections, praise God further reflections of encouragement. So at this time, Evangelist Mabry. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. And she's in that building, not made by hand. Not made by hand. She made it over. She made it over. Hallelujah. She made it over. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. We give honor to you, Bishop, in the name of Jesus and First Lady to Pastor Boone, to, to Gr Pastor Grayson, hallelujah, to all the ministers and friends, hallelujah. We say praise the Lord to everyone, to the family. We say praise the Lord. I, I thank God because it is an honor to talk about such a, I call her a gentle giant. She was so gentle, so precious. I thank God because I got to know mother, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus through Trisha a lot. So Trisha would say, I'm going to your house to eat today. And I said, no, dear, I didn't cook. So that threw that out. So she said, okay, I got a place we can go. She called up Mother Edwards. Mother Edwards would tell her she had, some, oh, we're going down there. So I went, we went down to Mother Edwards, and we started visiting her often. Well, Trisha would visit often, but I didn't know that Mother, hallelujah, was such a great cook. My God, my God, the woman could cook. Homemade fruitcake. And I love fruitcake. Hallelujah. But mother could cook. Hallelujah. So then I, I, we started, it, 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 we bound up together. It was, I call us the three Mouseketeers. It was Sister Dolores. It was myself. Hallelujah. And it was one more. Hallelujah. We all got together because Trish, we got against Trisha because Trisha thought she knew everything. So we got together to come against her. And Mother Edwards, I knew I was in with Mother because many people don't call me Lil, not unless you know me real good or in my family. And she said, Lil, get her. Get her. Just get her. And we would get her. And that really, Mother was so happy. I thank God because when there was always prayer time, the Lord laid her on my heart. And we would call and we would pray, my God. You talking about a connection with God. Hallelujah, such a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. I thank God because I think about her humbleness and how she was so humble and stayed under Mother Holton, then Mother Brown, then it was her. Hallelujah. How it was passed, the torch was passed from each one of them. And she picked up the torch. Hallelujah. And she carried it for a while. But I'm here today to let you know, family, be encouraged. Be, hallelujah, God is going to strengthen you. He's going to take you through, hallelujah. If there's any way in the body of Christ, Bishop, hallelujah, the body of Christ here can help you. Let us know. We will come. We will pray with you, hallelujah, because prayer changes things. Prayer strengthens the body. Prayer, God will step in when no one else is there. I'm a witness. I lost my mother one day. Hallelujah. There's not a place. No one can take the place of mother. But I tell you one thing, God can take you through it. He'll be there. He'll be there. He'll comfort you through it. He'll keep you in the, hallelujah, he'll keep you. He'll keep you. But I thank God. As also, I was thinking about mother. She was a precious jewel. A jewel is something you don't find. It's a rare a rare thing. I thank God for her. I thank God for her, what she added to the body of Christ. See, it takes all of us to add to it. Hallelujah. It takes those that are shining. It takes take those that are dim. But she was a shining light. Humble. Humble before the Lord. And I thank God for her. I thank God for being introduced to her. Being in our home. Hallelujah. Taking part of her life. Hallelujah. That she gave to me. And I'm so grateful that I got to know her on a different relationship. On a different basis. And I thank God for her. So Sister Barbara, Elder Edwards, be encouraged today. 
God's going to keep you. Hallelujah. One thing you can do and always remember, you could depend on God. You could depend on God. When no one else is there, you can depend on God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have expressions of love and encouragement. Praise the Lord. The first praise the Lord remarks of words of love and encouragement will be coming from Sister Maria Mowat. And following her, there will be expressions coming from the Haitian community. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord to the family, to Barbara, Robert, um, the sisters who are here, the entire Edwards family. Uh, condolences from me and my husband, the entire Saunders family, sends their love and support. I um, thought about what I was going to say about uh, Mother Edwards, or Mom Ruth, as I called her, and I thought I'd just share with you our last real encounter. It was a few weeks ago, and um, we were here in service, and Bishop afforded us the opportunity to uh, appreciate somebody, someone you really appreciated. And it's one thing to love somebody and know somebody loves you. I loved Mom Ruth, and I knew she loved me. So there was no question about that. But I said to her, I walked over to her. She was sitting where she always sat. And I said to her, I need you to know how much I appreciate everything you've ever done for me. And she looked at me and smiled as if to say she knew. But you can tell somebody you appreciate them, but it's a whole nother thing to tell them why. So I started at the beginning and I said, I thank you. I appreciate you for watching my oldest son so I could finish high school. I, was, I had him my senior year, had to go back to school. So she watched him every day, Monday through Friday before she went to work. That takes a lot. She, we dropped him off, she watched him, dropped him off at Aunt Jeanette's at the post office until we got home from school and then we got him. And she did that every day. I don't know many people today that would do that. Girl, don't you know I gotta work? <laughs> and you know, and that would be reasonable for most people, but she did it and she enjoyed doing it and she never complained. So I told her, I appreciate that. I want you to know I remember that. I said, I appreciate you showing up multiple times with a check made out to the gas company or the electric company. We never asked for it, but I, she knew we were struggling. We had the boys. And she'd just come over, drop it off, and leave. No pomp, no circumstance. Didn't want a big thank you. She just saw a need and filled it. And I told her, I appreciate that. It's one thing to ask for something and get it. It's a whole nother thing to get something you didn't ask for, but you need it. So I told her, I, I appreciate that. And most of all, I told her, I appreciate her being the one consistency in our lives. That one thing that never changed, that you could always depend on. I said, thank you for helping me raise the boys. Because she was truly a help. They stayed every Sunday, Monday at her house and came home Tuesday after school. From the, as far back as I can remember, she was doing that. First she had the first, then we added another, then we added another, and she just kept it going and fed them, took care of them. They loved being with her. She loved having them. They lit up when they saw her. She lit up when she, with, you know, when she saw them. And I told her, I thank you for that. I said, I thank you for showing us how to walk in this Christian life, you know, to actually be what you say you are. And, you know, a lot of people stumble, fall, but she never did. She was consistent. She loved the Lord. You knew she loved the Lord. She loved her family. You knew she loved the family. Her walk was impeccable. You could look at her. She taught us how to, she taught you how to dress. You know, how to, how to carry yourself in, 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 in this Christian dumb, this Christian walk we're living. And she never faltered in that. And I told her, I, I appreciate you being that consistency in my life, up close and from afar. And 
I think what um, encapsulates her life is I was at work the other day, and there's people that I work with from Whitesboro who knew her. And they don't come here, but they knew her in the community. And they came up to me, and they're like, so sorry to hear about, you know, Mom Ruth passing, but we know where she is. And when we look at her and we say, you know, we know where she is, that's one thing. But when the world knows that your walk, the life you lived before them, when the world says we know where she is, you know, that's, that says everything you need to know about her life. Thank you for the opportunity to give reflections about uh, Mom Ruth. I loved her to death, and I knew she loved me. Thank you. brothers and sisters, parents, and friends who are affected by this morning, one of the great servants of the Lord of the century has passed away. The Lord has called to him a mother, a friend, a sister, a cousin, a servant, an ambassador, Sister Ruth Edwards. We are gathered this morning to celebrate the life of a great lady, a woman of distinction, whom the great unfortunate, the cruel enemy of all men has taken away from our bosom. We are gathered this morning to surrender the family with all sympathy and to deposit her at their last resting place. We are here this morning to hear and listen to the, to the message of the Word of God, the message of the resurrection which can not only console, dry our tears, but also make us disappear of fear of this enemy, which is death. We are here this morning to encourage Sister Barbara Vernet the extent of sympathy to the family. We are here this morning because nature once again wants to remind us the fragility of life. The Bible says all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the wind pass away, but the word of God yeah. remains forever. Yeah. Yeah. Our life carries within its greatness, its beauty, and at the same time, is finitude. The life of Sister Ruth was beautiful and fragile, complex and simple, generous and bruised like all existence. 
and this painful circumstance, the Federation of Asian Pastors of all of South Jersey, as well as the Asian Evangelical Baptist Church of Egg Arbor Township, we sympathize with pain and afflictions of parents, friends, and allies, and we offer them our Christian sympathies. Friends, parents, allies, may the Lord comfort you and sustain you. God bless you. God is good. In the good and the bad, the tears and the joy, God is good. Uh, my name is Magali Andre, and I'm here uh, on the behalf of Haitian Community Center to show our support to our sister, Barbara. Um, at the same time, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you, Barbara, for the support, for the love and commitment you have shown to our community. You have always been there for us. But as Christian, we are not without, without hope. We take solace in knowing that one day we all, we all will be resurrected till we meet again. May the grace and the peace of God be with you all. God bless. God bless you this morning. It's amazing that her passing away has brought many people. And this is why Solomon says it's better to be in the house of mourning than the house of mirth. Because here we are together, never knowing you, but here we are, brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, I cannot say much about Sister Ruth, but I know one thing. That by looking at Sister Barbara, I know that she must have been a person of impact. Because Sister Barbara, you have impacted so many people, especially in the Haitian community. I cannot say that Sister Ruth was someone, was a light that shone because Barbara, whoever she is, she doesn't speak much, but her work speaks for herself. She just shines. You know, the Bible says we are a light, we're not loudspeakers. And I can say one thing about Ruth by seeing Barbara, that she is a king maker. Because beyond every good man, there's a better woman. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and also, Brother Claude knows that a happy wife makes for a happy life. So the, the two goes together. But anyway, I, I want to say that to you that Observing the, the universe, the, the, the stars shine brighter after they are dead. And I'm sure that Sister Ruth, by any coincidence, her name means in Hebrew, princess, queen. That Sister Ruth's life will shine brighter because she has impacted your life. And live in that memory, live in continuing the legacy and let everyone know her life by the way, that you live your life. So I'm going to leave you with this word. Jesus says that if you have seen me, you have seen my father. So if they see you, they must see Sister Ruth and the impact that she's made on your life. Sister Barbara, I love you. We are there for you. Pastor Claude, the church refuge, loves you. They couldn't all be there, but we are an extension of that church. And we thank you for your hard work in touching the, the Haitian community. May God bless you this morning.
Praise the Lord. The remarks are absolutely awesome. Thank God. Praise God. The tribute for the, to the woman of God. Before we go any further, though, it was indicated that there was another brother from the Haitian community that wanted to have remarks. We don't want to miss someone. Okay. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry about that gender thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I just want to say I miss Boy, Eda Boy, uh, and also I know uh, Mom real good. She's my next door neighbor. I was just over there, and she, he knows what happened. <laughs> anyway. But I, I love her, and I, we work together also, and I know her. So anyway, I miss her. I really miss her. Every time I pass, go, drive out of my driveway, pass her house, I just think just wondering, you know, because I, I'm on my way. I know I'm not here to stay, but I tell my kids and all of them, I'm not here to stay. We come and we go. But I do my best to serve the Lord the best I know how. And I love everybody. And I know I'm going to keep my soul right because I know God is taking care of me. He's taking care of me. And I ask everybody, put your heart in God. Thank him every day. I tell mine that, well, they do or not, at least I tell them. And I love everybody. Amen. But I love Rob's mom. He is my, what you want to call it, he the man. <laughs> oh, oh. And no worry, I can't, I ain't no way in the world I can uh, uh, say I don't love them. But if I need him, well. he's there, he's coming. <laughs> and that's what I like about him, and I like him. I love Rob because he takes care of me. If my heat break down, he's right there. So, <laughs> I love him. He's right there. And I love his mom also. And I, I, I love, and I love to cook pies, and I take them over there and let her try it, and let him try it, let everybody try it, see how they like it. But I just had to say this, and I love his mom and the whole family. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise him. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have, praise God, reflections of our grandmother. Praise God. And who's going to be coming is Robert. Brandon, correct, Destiny, and I think it's Devon. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Immediately following them will be a solo coming from evangelist Alicia Cooper. I won't complain. Hello. Uh -huh. Thank you, everyone, for coming uh, to come out and help us so love to our grandmother. We really appreciate it. Um, it's really comforting to be able to see all your smiling faces. One thing I know she loved was this church. Yeah. We're, we're these people, you know. Um, so it means a lot to see all of you here. Um, I tried for a week to come up with words to say here, and it was very difficult. Um, it's hard to find words that define someone that means everything to you. Uh, right? So... What I know is my life is better because she was in it, right? My children's life is better because she was in it, right? Um, someone, someone earlier brought up Aunt B and Aunt Ola. I spent a lot of time over there when I was a kid. It wasn't always fun. It, it was, but it, it wasn't. Uh, they didn't have TV, they, it wasn't. But one thing that, that sticks out with, with them, Aunt B, Aunt Ola, my grandmother. They dedicated their lives to worshiping the Lord, to following the word, right? Their, their whole life was dedicated to, to this ideal. Um, and so everything she did, I think she did as a way of worship. The love she showed us, the food, you know. Everyone's grandma can cook, our grandma could cook, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> It was way that she showed love. I, I thought about, you know, 
I don't remember, I always remember her doing for someone else. She was always doing for someone else, you know. Um, and so it, this is our chance to do for her. We love you, Grandmom. Um, I'm just, I just feel grateful. I'm very grateful to have had her. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Writing this has been so hard because the love I have for my grandma is so strong and so pure that I can't find the right words that are worthy enough to describe her. And I've come to the conclusion that there are none, so I'm going to do the best I can. My grandma was my best friend. We would laugh about anything and everything together. And whenever I needed to talk about anything, I knew I could go to her, and the last thing she would do is judge me. Do you know the comfort you get when you see the perfect sunset or when your favorite song comes on? Or you go outside and it's not too hot or too cold, but the perfect breeze. That's the comfort I got for being with my grandma. She was everything you needed in a person. She was perfect. My grandma was known for plenty of things, whether it was for her kind heart or her helpful hand, and definitely for her delicious food. But one thing about my grandma that will stick with me forever was the way she would have did anything and everything to make sure I was good or had a smile on my face. And boy, was she good at it. I have countless memories playing in my head of times when me and her would stay up watching our favorite shows, The Chrisley Show, or our favorite catfish, just laughing nonstop at it, or each other. Another one of my favorite memories was being in the kitchen with her, making all types of foods and drinks. But our favorites to make was our, her homemade milkshakes, mac and cheese, and her corn pudding. I would do anything to go back to those times when we were cooking in our girls' days when we would go out shopping and out to eat. And whenever she would go on vacation, she would always make sure to grab me something, like this beautiful ring and this necklace I will keep and cherish forever. I love you, Grandma, and I will miss you forever. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But I'm happy that when I think back on my grandmother, I'm not filled with grief or mourning. Um, I'm not hopeless or, or sad, but I, I'm filled with a joy and a thankfulness. Um, I'm thankful for both the quantity and the quality of time we spent together. I'm thankful for all the lessons, the prayers, and the wisdom she was able to instill in each of us. I'm ultimately thankful for the unconditional love that she showed to, to everyone. Um, when I think of my grandmother, I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. Love is patient. Yeah. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor other. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Grandma Ruth never looked for credit or adulation for any of her acts. She, she truly had a spirit of service, and doing for others brought her joy. Um, <clears throat> my fondest memories with Grandma come in the kitchen. We, we spent plenty of time cooking together. No matter how good... I get at it. It's just never quite Grandma Ruth. Uh, <laughs> she was able to, to cultivate a passion that, that I will keep in me forever. As the matriarch of the Edwards family, she, she built the foundation by which we stand today. To put God first in everything we do, to honor, respect, and cherish family, and always work hard and to do our very best. It truly is hard to put in the words the impact she had on our lives. And as we start this next chapter without you in the physical, I know that you're still with us. I can still see your face when I look at my father, my Aunt Barb. I can still hear your voice when I speak with my brother and my little sister. I can still feel your, her, her love when I hug on my own children. Grandma, I love you. Thank you for everything. And I'll see you again.
grandmother, Sister Ruth Edwards. Um, I appreciate the love that's been shown, the kind words and support that's been given to not only myself, but the rest of the Edwards and extended family during this time. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to be present with you all today, uh, but just know that my love is there with you. Uh, just like I've always rested assured that no matter where I was, my grandmother's love was going to be there with me. So I know it's with me now. Uh, it's been tough finding the words to express how much I truly appreciated my grandmother. Um, so I'll speak candidly for just a moment. Um, I thank the most high that I was blessed and had the opportunity to be raised by such a, a great woman. Uh, one of the things I've always admired most was how much she loved and labored for her family. Um, whether that labor came in the form of your nurturer, a nurse, uh, a chef, a prayer warrior, you knew that she was in your corner and that she was willing to go to bat for you at any moment. Um, she was your biggest cheerleader in moments of success. And if you ever fell, she was there with the strength and love to help you get back on your feet. Uh, the lessons given, uh, times and memories shared is, is something I can only look on uh, with joy. Uh, knowing that she loved me and being confident and knowing that she knew I loved her uh, brings me peace. Um, from her children, to her grandchildren, to her great-grandchildren. There's a legacy she's left that um, I'm so proud of and, and proud to represent her. Uh, to my family, continue to be strong. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Uh, again, thank you to everyone who came out and showed support with us today. Um, rest in peace to my grandmother, a great woman of God, and, and, and bless us to all of you. Take care. Praise the Lord. Praying for your family. Praying for you. Love you. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I've had some good days. And I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some lonely and sleepless nights. But when I take a look around and I think things I find out that all of my, my good days, they outweigh my bad days, so I won't, I won't complain. Sometimes my, my clouds hang low. And I can hardly see the road. And I stop and I ask the question, Lord, why, 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 why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me more than my weary, my weary eyes can see. 
So I'll just say thank you, Lord. I'll just say thank you, Lord. I'll just say thank you, Lord. And I won't complain. Because God's been so good to me. He's been so very, 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 so very good to me. More than this world could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. And he draws, he draws all my tears away. And he turns my midnight today yes he does so I gotta say thank you so I gotta say thank you so I gotta say thank you thank you Lord 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 I won't I won't complain dry of every tear and it turns my midnight into day yes he does so I gotta say thank you Lord hallelujah we gotta say thank you Lord we gotta say thank you Lord we gotta say thank you Lord through tears we say thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's good. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God, I won't complain. At this, we're going to deviate just a little bit. Praise God. We're going to ask, praise the Lord, at this time, the tribute, praise God, is going to be coming from, um, praise the Lord, missionary mother, praise God's children, missionary Barbara, praise the Lord, Vernette, and Elder Robert Edwards is coming at this time. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good day to give a good God a great praise. It's a good day to give a good God a great 
praise. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're all family here today. I, di I didn't know or take the time to even start to write anything down because, as my nephew said, how can you encapsulate a lifetime of goodness, a lifetime of love, a, a lifetime of always giving into a few words. So I'm just going to share what is on my heart at this moment. First of all, I would just like to thank all of you that are here today, because all of you paid a part in who she is. She loved all of you, and also the extension of the Haitian clergy and community. Thank you for your respect for her and, and coming to honor her. I, I really do appreciate that. But the church is her life, has been her lifestyle since I can remember. There's nothing that didn't center around church. Even back at the old site at George and Anna Streets, growing up with District, District Elder Brooks and Mother Laura and Mother Hattie and all those patriarchs that have gone on, they were her mentors at the time. They mentored her in love, mentored her in living holy, because she really believed holiness is right. <laughs> holiness is right. There was no deviation. She, she, there was no middle, it's black or right, right or wrong. And she was a standard in her faith. And she loved people. She loved the church people. She would always refer to you as saints. She would say, I didn't see this, this saint this day or that saint, but all of her church family, she referenced them as saints. That's how much she thought of you. And that's how much she loved you. And to my natural family, my aunts and my cousins, my, my nephews and great nephew and great nieces, she loved you so much. She loved you so with a great love. And you loved her back. She would always speak so highly of your childhood and how you came up and the things you did together. And those memories stayed with her, good memories that she would also treasure. And now, as she's resting, and as the prayers have gone up for me, all of you calling out our names and praying for us, that has sent such a comfort, because I always heard God of all comfort, but I never understood it completely, what God of all comfort means. Because he'll spring something, a still soft voice, that will come to you and say, there's no more work for her now. She's accomplished and completed every role and assignment that you have given her. She's completed that. So now it's time for her to take her rest. And now she's resting in peace, the peace that passes all understanding. No more pains and aches and going to the doctor. None of those things. And I also realize and it gives me such comfort that all of her Christian life, all of the praying and fasting and giving and worshiping was for November 26th yeah. when he called her and she answered, and she answered in peace when he called her name. So that gives me comfort to know that she was ready for that transition that I too will have to meet one day. So I pray that I'm ready. I pray that I walk up and continue to give her glory and make her proud. That I continue to do all the things that she desired for me. And as my nephew has said, always our biggest cheerleader. Always pushing and saying, you can do it. There's nothing too hard. And I think one of my final conversations with her, she said to me, um, I don't know why this is happening or why the world is to the way it is, but I do know God is in control. He's in control. And he will never stop being in control. So again, thank you for this moment to honor the mother that will always be with me. 
wherever I go, because she's a part of me. Her blood is in me. So when you see me, you see her. You'll see her. And so she lives on in us. And I love you all, to all that called and sent text messages, but most of all who prayed for me. I'm so thankful. So God bless you, and again, in the love of Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord to my little big sister there. I love her. Uh, to my family. Uh, love all of you who, you know how mom was. So I can't put it into words. You just felt that. To the pastor, to all the ministers, to the leadership of the church, to the deacons, to the evangelists, the ministers, and all the witnesses. I say praise the Lord to you. Uh, if you don't mind, I just want to talk about my mom. And I can go way back. But I want to try to keep it simple. My mom was my heart. And when I say she was my heart, she was the motivation that kept me going. My mother was a doctor. <laughs> I was just over there maybe two weeks ago, and I, <coughs> I did that. And I would change my clothes between jobs at mom, and it gave me a chance to see her, make sure she was okay. But by the time I was changed and about to leave, she came with this cup of hot honey lemon <laughs> with uh, special spices. <laughs> I was a mother's boy. I was a mommy's boy. Yeah, I'm proud of it. <laughs> proud of it. I remember her being a good wife. A good wife. My dad used to work on a clam boat, for those who didn't know. And sometimes, it would get rough on the waters, storms would come up. But I remember, I guess I was about 11 years old. And I heard, I was in another room. So I went in to find out what this, Mm, was. So I opened her door and I saw her on her knees. I'll never forget it. And she was praying for my father to get home safe. I'll never forget that. She was my friend, and I would tell her everything. If you told me, she probably knew. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would tell mom everything. One day, I had been going through some trials, and I had made some bad decisions, and I failed and made mistakes, too many to number. And I felt so hard on myself. And 
I remember the conversation so clearly in my mind. I could hear her voice. And I would say, Mom, I'm not innocent, though. <laughs> and she said, I know. Then she told me, but you are forgiven. She told me, she told me you're forgiven. And she said, and I, she went way old school, Aunt B on me. <laughs> she said, and the blood. She told me, has paid the price for you a long time ago. And I'll never forget it. Uh, I remember so many nights my sons talked about Aunt B and how, I don't know if Wayne Williams and uh, there's a couple other guys here, we used to fall asleep in the back of the church. <laughs> they had three services back then, Bishop. Yes, sir. Early morning, afternoon service, and back again at midnight service. I think it was midnight. Mom made sure we was there, and we would cut up so bad in the back of the church, Mom Williams, and then would come and pinch us. And Mom said, that's good. She should have. But those things still abide in my heart. And I thank you, Mom every sacrifice, every sacrifice she made for me and my family. Maria, you know the story. Thank you for sharing that. I couldn't do it without her. I couldn't have done it without her. She told me about the Holy Ghost and with the evidence of speaking in tongues. She told me about those things and she proved it and lived it in front of me. I will always love my mother and whatever she has given, I pray I can pass it down to my babies, my grandbabies my sons, and to those who are our friends, people, we, uh, I'm sorry, Max, you don't remember me, do you, Max? You do? Oh, good. <laughs> I met Mr. Max working for Sears, and I got a, the privilege to work right under him. Many days we shared scriptures, and this man, this man right here, Pastor, is an awesome man of the book. <laughs> it's good to see you, Max. Thank you. And I, I just want to say thank you, family, for standing by us. And because mom is gone, we're going to stick closer now. That's my promise to mom. I'm going to be more in your lives. I'm not going to let you get away. I love you all. And I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. Amen. Wow. Amen.
Thank you. Keep us in, our, in your prayers, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Come on, that, that deserves hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you. Thank you for the love of God. Thank you for his grace. Thank you for his mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. You've been a blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even in her resting, she's still impacting and making a difference. Hallelujah. We bless it. This time we're going to uh, come in this order, have remarks, um, clergy from Bishop Grayson, praise God, who's coming at this time to give remarks. Following him immediately will be acknowledgement of cards and condolences and the obituary by evangelist, praise God, Vivian White. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> God is good. Hallelujah. He's good when you're living. He's good when you're dead. He's good all the time. <laughs> to this beautiful family, I've heard so much about this wonderful lady. Yes. Amen. And she's, I didn't know her too much like other, some of y'all know her. But one thing I do know, she was saved. Yes. Oh, yeah, she was saved. Come on, she didn't talk saved, she lived saved. Amen? And uh, she was a good cook, too. She can cook a fruit cake. <laughs> she can cook anything she want to cook. Come on, somebody. And uh, I, I thank y'all for eulogizing her and telling all the stories about her. And she, I know one thing, she was a, a good friend of my mother-in-law. Yes, sir. She loved my mother-in-law. And uh, she, I remember Praise Power, and uh, they didn't circle things around Praise Power, but they didn't cooperate what they had to do with that. Amen. And every Praise Power, they're going to try to be there. And my mother-in-law sitting up in the front. <laughs> and she, I said, boy, they closed. Praise the Lord. And that's what life is all about. You live your life, and you die to death. So the way you live, the way you're going to die. It appointed once unto man to die, and after this, the judgment. Amen. So if you know you're going to die, why not prepare to die? So everybody's going to die. If the show is I born to die, I'm going to die. And I ask the Lord to don't let me suffer. Let me live a good life and I die a good death. Come on, somebody. Amen. So I don't want to sleep on out of here. They tell me she died in luxury. Sitting up in the chair. Went to sleep on this side and wake up on the other side. My God. Don't y'all mess with me. In here. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Yes, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm going to preface my reading um, with just a little bit of um, information with regard to Mother Ruth Edwards. What an outstanding person she was, a saint of God. Um, uh, it's already been said that she lived an excellent life as a Christian. This morning when I got up, I was thinking about her and um, the scripture Galatians 5 and 22 came to me. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And all of those things, all of those things, all of those things were Mother Ruth Edwards. She lived it, 
And she exemplified holiness in everything that she did. And I looked at that and I was saying, you know, Christ's gospel, those of us here at Christ's gospel, if you want a mentor, if you want an example of holiness, look at the life of Mother Ruth Edwards in Jesus' Amen. name. I hope I didn't steal your message, Pastor. <laughs> we have a, um, quite a few cards, and I'm just going to read two. Um, your mother's light still shines. Her light still shines in memories of love and laughter shared, in all the ways she touched your life and all the ways she cared. Her light still shines within this world, still strong and bright and true. And always deep within your heart, her light still shines in you. May her beautiful light give you strength and bring peace and comfort to your heart. And that's from Minister Jeff and Evangelist Anna Moore and Sister Hope in Jesus' name. With deepest sympathy, during this difficult time, may you find comfort in your loving memories, support from those who care for you, and peace from the faith that lives within your heart. With heartfelt sympathy, Tabernacle Church of Christ family, Suffragan Bishop Otis and Shepherd Mother Bessie Grayson. Christ Gospel Church Love Center Incorporated, Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr., the senior pastor, and Pastor Hannah F. Boone is the assistant pastor. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. To the family of Mother Ruth May Edwards, we the pastor, ministers, officers, and members of Christ Gospel Church Love Center of Whitesboro wish to express our deepest heartfelt sympathy in the passing of Mother Ruth May Edwards. Mother Edwards was, was a longtime faithful member of Christ Gospel Church Love Center. She served under the late District Elder John Brooks and continued to serve faithfully under Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr. During her service, she led the youth department. She taught Sunday school. She sang on both the mass and missionary choirs and served on the mother's board. Mother Ruth was a prayer warrior and believed in the power of prayer. She was a woman of faith. Whatever her hands found to do, she did it with all of her might. She was a faithful woman of God with a gentle and peaceful spirit. And we honor God for the life of Mother Edwards. Second Corinthians, Five and one reminds us, for we know if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Through this time and in the days ahead, we pray that the God of all comfort will comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Continue to cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. We, your church family, are here for you, and may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Sorrowfully submitted, Bishop Edgar D. Robinson, Jr., pastor of the Christ Gospel Church Love Center, Incorporated. At this time, I will read the obituary. You all have it on your program. We'll say that um, missionary Barbara Vernett wrote such a beautiful legacy and story about her mother. Um, 
as I was reading it and trying to edit and do what needed to be done, it just stirred my very heart to read the words, this story, the journey, the obituary of Ruth May Edwards. Ruth May Edwards was born to R.B. and Ella May Wright in Belleville, Florida on January 30th, 1941. She attended school in Hamilton County, Florida and graduated from J.R.E. Lee High School in Jasper, Florida. Ruth was introduced to Robert James Edwards in 1961 while both worked in Miami, Florida. They were married on May 31st, 1962. To this union were born two children, Barbara Jean and Robert James Jr. In 1965, they traveled to Wildwood, New Jersey with the intention of only staying a few months. But Robert found employment on an offshore clam boat and made a permanent home for the family in Whitesboro. Ruth experienced a spiritual conversion in the late 1960s through the witnessing by her uncle and aunt, Deacon Mal Holton and Mother Be Beatrice Holton. She was baptized in Jesus' name and received the Holy Ghost at Holy Temple Church in Whitesboro. Sister Ruth served faithfully until the passing of Pastor Holden in 1971. Thereafter, the Lord led Ruth to join Christ Gospel Church under the leadership of District Elder John Brooks, and she continued to serve under the pastorate of, of Suffragan Bishop Edgar Robinson. During this time, she developed close spiritual relationships with two women who influenced her spiritual growth and maturity. Mother Laura Williams and Mother Hattie Brooks. Over the years, these mighty women of valor would worship together, travel to church conventions, and enjoy each other's company. Sister Edwards served as Sunday school teacher, youth department president, and choir member. She was later consecrated as church mother. In this position, she would mentor, instruct and encourage others through acts of love and consistent prayer. Ruth enjoyed being a homemaker, but once her children reached school age, she entered the job market. She mainly worked at Woodbine Developmental Center from which she retired in 2003. Family and close friends were very important to Mother Ruth. As everyone knows, Barbara and Robert Jr. were her pride and joy. As the grands came along, the level of love and nurturing shifted. The boys, Robert, Davon, and Brandon, were the moon and the stars to her. The boys and Mother Ruth developed an unbreakable bond as she watched them mature into intelligent, responsible, and accomplished men. Let's not forget Destiny, her only granddaughter. Destiny and Mother Ruth were a tag team, spending quality time together, playing games, going to the mall, and stopping into Starbucks. Extended family included her cousin, Ethel Mae Roberts. She and Ethel grew up together and enjoyed a wonderful relationship. Ethel and her children, Edward, Marilyn, and Gloria, would visit often, and the children lovingly called her Aunt Ruth. Mother Ruth had many talents. Many know that she enjoyed being in the kitchen, and she put her special touch on every meal that she created. Sewing was another hobby. She has created many different types of clothing, wedding gowns, dresses, suits, and blouses, she was sought after for the tailoring needs of many. Ruth was observant and a quick learner. She learned how to crochet and do macrame by just watching. Also, Ruth, Mother Ruth had a green thumb. Hmm. She loved plants and flowers. 
Mother Ruth believed in the power of prayer and was an avid student of the Word of God, a prayer warrior, and a spiritual mentor. Her favorite scriptures were Jude 1, 24 through 25, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, and Philippians 4 and 13. Mother Ruth Edwards leaves to celebrate her life two children, Barbara and Claude Burnett, Robert and Stephanie Edwards, siblings, Athelene and Jerome Marine, Mabel, Manny Atkins, R.B. Wright Jr., David Wright, four grandchildren, Robert, Devon, Brandon, and Destiny, and six great-grandchildren, praise the Lord, Victoria, Araya, Raven, Robert Jr., Skyler, and Talia, two godchildren, Sharina Gomez, and Chelsea White, special family, Dolores Johnson and Patricia McCarty, and a host of family, friends, and church family. She was predeceased by her parents, her brother, John Wright, and her husband, Robert James Edwards. So reads the story of the journey of Ruth May Edwards. May God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. God bless you. Amen, praise God. What a woman, praise God. What a warrior, praise God. What a daughter of God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to introduce, praise the Lord, our eulogist, praise the Lord, which is Pastor es mm, Edgar Robinson, praise the Lord, Christ uh, of Christ Gospel Church, praise God. We are going to have a um, ministry and song from Sister Angela just before Bishop Robinson prays. But Sister Ruth and Bishop Robinson had a special connection, too. They had a real, and we, we appreciate just how great God is. And um, praise God and what he has done. Well done. Praise the Lord. The Lord says well done. Praise the Lord at this time.
thing. The is-ness, the is-ness, he is the best thing, not he was the best thing. He is the best thing. He shall always be the best thing that's ever happened to me. Can I get a witness this very afternoon? Wow, to God be the glory for the things he has done. To God be the glory for the things he he has done. We honor the Lord, amen, this afternoon for his loving kindness in our lives, certainly, certainly for being first in my life, and certainly to our clergy, ministerial staff, Bishop Grayson, the pastors, amen, our uh, Haitian com community that's coming to be a part of the services today, amen, this family, Barbara Jean, Robert James, amen, the grand, the great-grandchildren, amen, the family who've come from out of town, the Trentonites, and those from Florida, thank you so very much. Amen. What a woman, what a woman, what a woman. What a woman, what a woman, what a woman of God. What a woman of God is a good way of playing it. Amen. Truly, we just so, whew, we're just so blessed by it to knowing uh, Mother Edwards. We're, we're, we're blessed. We're absolutely blessed by knowing her. You have shared so many awesome things about her. Amen. And I, I, have to com I have to admit that uh, Mother Edwards uh, was, was a cook. Amen. You know, 
teachers, you know, pastors, you know, leaders, they find, they find, they find folk who can cook. I don't know how it happens, but it, it comes that way sometimes. Amen. That's a, that's a cliche. All right. But in any case, amen. And so when she make her a fruit cake, you know, and everybody don't like fruit cake. And I tell folks now, <laughs> Mother Edwards makes a mean machine fruit cake. Amen. A tremendous. And I, and I realize that it could it be that some of the greatest cooks come from the South. Southern food. Now, I'm talking about there, 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 are those, there are those who are, you know, have that, you know, cuisine taste. You know, that's in like Boston and up in New York and that. But then there's a Southern food. And, and so, amen. Now, now, for those who didn't know, Mother Edwards just about maybe two months ago gave me a recipe. See, y'all talk about it, I get recipes. <laughs> so she gave me a recipe and said, uh, Bishop, this is yours. So I got the recipe for her salmon cakes. I said, oh, thank you, Mother. <laughs> amen. I'll have to share with you one time, you know, just say, amen. Now, I can't duplicate it, amen, but certainly more than a cook, a humble spirit. A loving spirit. You said it well, Robert. You said it well, Barbara. You said it, you said it well when you had described your mother, your, talk, your grandmother, your great-grandmother. You, just, you just try, describe a woman who really just made an impact, ministered in all that she did. Amen. And certainly the, uh, when I think about her, it puts a smile on my face. Amen. And think about Mom B and Mom Brown. Amen. I'm just so grateful, so grateful. I'm so grateful that she was a part of our lives. She was a part of our lives. She was my, she was my uh, seamstress, you know. She was my tailor, you know, because, you know, when you buy pants and they, they get too long, you know, mother took care of that for me. She knew, it. she had my measurements already taken care of. Uh-huh. And when I started losing weight, well, that's another story. Amen. But she... What a, and, and lady, I don't talk about sweetheart, but man, lady just brought a clothes over to Mother Edwards, and we just, they sit there talking, I'm watching TV, because, you know, they go on and on and on. But what she did, she did out of love. I can really say that sincerely, that whatever Mother Edwards did, you could feel the love that was brought from it. Oh, I would to God that all of us would do what we do, amen, in the name of love. She didn't have to be seen. She just did it, amen, and pray that you would certainly appreciate it, and it was done, it was done well. The writer of the Apostle Paul mentions to his spiritual son, Timothy, these words in 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If any man purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Can we say amen? A vessel of honor. Again, as I said earlier, when I think of Mother Edwards, there is a smile that automatically comes to my face. There's just something about what she did and how she moved and how she blessed not only me, but obviously blessed this entire congregation and this community. You know, our community is changing uh, very rapidly in this particular area. And I don't mean from a, 
I mean from a cultural standpoint. This community is changing. But one thing that should stand true is the life, the legacy of women and men who have impacted this community should always remain the same. There should always be godliness, genuine love for not only God, but for those who are God's children. You've shared so eloquently about Mother Edwards in your interactions with her, and there's more that you can certainly share, and perhaps at the repast, or perhaps even as you talk to the family, you'll be able to share additionally. But she was a consistent individual. She was a consistent individual, and, and that makes the difference. Uh, we are here today, and, and as we see what is going on around us, we understand clearly that when we come to a home-going service, you and I can't help but think about our own personal mortality. Can't help but think about it, yet we're here. There is a coffin in front of us that has the remains of an awesome woman. But the reality is also somewhere in the line of time, we also will have to go this way. The, 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 the moment in time has brought us to think about who we are as well as whose we are and where we will spend eternity. And so the Apostle Paul he writes to his spiritual son, Timothy, and he talks about some issues that Timothy needs to be alert of and concerned about in terms of consistency. And he talks about in, in various times, people will be coming uh, profane and have vain babblings, and, and it will increase, and there will be more ungodliness. He shares that, not only that, but... The, the, the words will not only not will not any longer be uh, beneficial. Look at what he says, verse number nineteen. He says, "Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this insignia or this seal that the Lord knoweth them that are His." In a day, family, in a day, sisters and brothers, where there are a whole lot of imitations, a whole lot of knockoffs, a whole lot of fake things, God knows those who are his. Because he being the master, the creator, he knows how to genuinely Put us together. You can get a knockoff Gucci bag for $35 in Atlantic City, but the real Gucci costs more than that. You can get some fake $100 bills, but the real $100 bills are noticed by the person who has an eye. God knows who are his. I said God knows his own. He knows those persons that are really genuinely his. And brothers and sisters, that makes all the difference in the world. And he, he, the Bible says, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then he talks about a great house. And in the house there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. In the house, there are, there's gold and there is silver. There are earthen aspects in the house. But he makes this statement, Paul makes this statement that you, 
I, I'm, I'm young, so I don't know a lot of these things, but when I go visit individuals' houses, they have in their uh, uh, China's cabinet. They have cutlery and dishes that are only used for special occasions. And uh, uh, when a person has jewelry, it, you, know, you know, good jewelry, they don't always wear the good jewelry around. Special occasions, they bring the jewelry out, you know, and they bling bling and let everybody see the diamonds and, and, and the has its place. But Mother Edwards was a jewel. And the jewelness that she had, Barbara Rob, was the fact that she didn't wait to get in church to show her jewelness. Her vesselness, uh, meek for the master's use. She, whenever she went, Walmart, Shot Right, Starbucks, huh? Come on. It, she would she would show that she still got it going on. I don't mean clothing, I mean her spirit, because she was a child of God. I'm so glad I don't have to wait. I, don't, I, can, I can show who I am outside the church or outside of the edifice. When I walk down the street, I, folks said, there's a child of God. Not because there's a cross on my shoulder or on my neck, but because in my heart, I know in whom I believe. And I am convinced that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think. A vessel, a vessel sanctified, fit for the master's use, a vessel molded and made, a vessel who doesn't mind serving and worshiping the Lord. Yes, 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 she would tell you like it is. And after all the telling you like it is, it was a love that would embrace you. And yes, like, like, uh, uh, MacRiddle says, do better. Going to do better. Going to do better. Sisters and brothers, when you have a chosen vessel, we value chosen vessels. And so it would be apropos, amen, on that great getting up morning, I don't mean Paul, and I don't mean Peter and James and the apostles, but in that great getting up morning, here comes a whole array of vessels. Vessels that you don't, may not know, and I may not know, but vessels that come down. And I hear them say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because a vessel is nothing more than a servant. Use me, Lord. Any way you use me, use me, Lord. I, I, I don't mind. Just, just use me because I am called into the kingdom for such a time as this. A chosen vessel, sanctified vessel, born of the water and the spirit, baptized in the wonderful, vivacious name of Jesus Christ, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speaking in other tongues as the spirit of others. Oh, yeah, she's, she's a vessel. She is a vessel. She was a vessel. Not was. I is. She's a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? This vessel of honor. Un, unexpectedly. Move from one phrase to another phrase. But yet the honor still lingers on. Grandchildren and great-grandchildren, those in our community, those in our church, we have seen individuals from yesteryear unto this present time. What she gave unto us has been passed down. And what we must do is embrace it, hold on to it, and not just talk about an historical aspect, but a point of who can I help? Who can I bless? 
so they would, at the conclusion of our time, they could say, that person, that man, that woman also was a vessel of honor. As you bow your heads this afternoon, Father, we celebrate the vessel that you have placed in our lives. Not with a lot of words, but with a great appreciation. She lived this life in a godly love. Thank you, Lord, for the lives that she has touched. There is indeed not only a remnant, but there's a residue that has been passed down. Yes, food is good, and her ability to serve is so is wonderful, but she's passed down Christ. And that will go away further. Any natural things we have done. We thank you for being so faithful unto her. Confidently we know that you are going to strengthen this family, strengthen this church, strengthen this community. This is confidence we have in you. You're going to do that. We praise you in advance for doing that. And Lord, our sensitivity will go forth that we will reach one another and lift one another up, encourage one another, sustain one another. So Lord, that we may hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servants. We are your workmanship. And I rejoice that you call us. I pray, Lord, if there is anyone in here this afternoon who don't know you, who are living in a world where they may be living beneath their privilege, you've already paid the price, you've already given your life, you have sacrificed your life, Lord, so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that there will be a comprehension or understanding of your greatness. And they will most normally, readily receive it and walk in it. For thy glory and honor we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Family, we love you to life. Thank you so very much. Thank you for sharing your mama with us. Amen. Thank you so very much. Be strong in the Lord. And in power's might. Amen. Again, for those who have traveled far, amen. From the south, thank you so very much. Some folks from Trenton area, thank you so very much. My, 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 my. What a wonderful, awesome woman of God. Momentary, the morticians are coming in. They're going to further the services. Amen. You also are invited, amen, for time period fellowship here at the church in Ivory Pass after the services at the Edgerton Cemetery. Kate Mayfield.